Hey, what's up, guys? Weather Geek here, bringing you guys a weather update regarding the potential for a severe weather outbreak across portions of central Illinois and northern Illinois. And here is a severe weather outlook across Illinois. You can see that the towns included in the moderate risk that was just posted. A moderate risk was issued by the SBC last night. Um, went from a slight to a immediately to a moderate risk across this area, which was which went from basically zero to 100 really quick. Yeah. Um, we're looking at the parameters right now, and it's looking more and more favorable for a potential tornado outbreak across portions of West Central, Central, and Northern Illinois. And some of the towns included are Bloomington, Peoria, Galesburg, Moline. Then you can put like your own town, like maybe Chillicothe, Dunlap, you know, Princeton, maybe Star Rock National Park area, you know, um, Lincoln, um, Macomb, Canton. All these other towns are in the moderate risk, which dictates the highest risk for severe weather and in this case um, also tornadoes um, there's also a big hail risk and there's also a damaging wind risk but right now we're looking at a potential tornado outbreak here and before we get into talking about like you know the tornado outbreak potential and stuff like that let's talk about um stuff beforehand let's look at the potential for heavy rain flooding tomorrow morning as elevated convection so basically before the severe outbreak kicks into gear we're going to have some elevated convection and that will potentially bring some heavy rain and also some maybe some moderate sized hail across the deep the um um the uh deeper the bigger cores basically um there'll be some hail potential but heavy rain looks like a big looks like a risk tomorrow morning with the elevated thunderstorms and then eventually those will kick on out of here and we will get um destabilization to occur in, around the triple point and looks like a, that sector that the SPC is highlighting is where supercells may initiate along a boundary and just out ahead of it probably and yeah it's looking pretty grim especially if you look at the um the her model and we'll look at that about um now so here's the 12z her that was issued this morning now let's pay attention to what's going on here here we can see that there's elevated convection going on it's starting to break out tonight late tonight there'll be some heavy rain possibly some hail you can see some cores starting to break out um, these will be elevated very low tornado potential but potential for some hail moderate size and these little tracks are like updraft lists basically these are these are elevated so you know these really we're going to be looking more into those once we get into uh, the surface-based convection which will be um, tomorrow at afternoon, evening. This stuff will kick on out of here, bringing probably about an inch of rain and more to areas, other areas, more elevated convection early to mid tomorrow morning. And you can see it'll clear, and then we'll get some supercells to break out in the warm sector and where there was destabilization. And what it looks like, the herd just goes bonkers and looks like a November 17, 2013 type look when you have a line of supercells and all these like tracks right here are updraft helicities and this is in one hour, not three hours. Look at the distance that this travels. I'll, I'll zoom in for you guys. Um, let's go to Northern Illinois. Think whether or not Cotton has a convenient sector um, for Northern Illinois. Well, it's probably because it was made in College of DuPage. So, of course, you got to highlight Illinois. Um, but you can see right here, look at the distance these travel in one hour. You go from here to here, that's in one hour. This as well, that as well. These storms are going to be absolutely rocking northeastward, probably at highway speeds. So if you're going to be planning on chasing them, be prepared for very fast storm motions. And also you got to worry about other storms around them. you got to worry about significant tornado potential. Um, so it's going to be a pretty messy, um, I feel like they're... I've been seeing storm chasers going to be making the drive to Illinois, and that's their choice. You know, my choice is I'm going to stay here probably, and if there's something local, I might go see it. But this is looking pretty darn dangerous, and also with, like, the um, pandemic going around, um, it's not very wise, in my opinion, to go out, especially since I'm not really the highest skill storm chaser. You know, for people that are high skill, great, go. we need you guys to go out there and report to National Weather Service about the tornado potential that we need you guys. But for amateur storm chasers, you know, you're going to have to find a really good note, road network. You're going to have really good knowledge of the area you're going in and also where to go and the motion of storms and you know there's all this other stuff you know and also keeping distance from others so there's a lot of stuff to keep in mind you know but you can see the um 
the um, you can see the H triple R or her. You know, I don't care how I pronounce it, but normally I do her or do H triple R just to be funny or something like that. You know, but it looks like a line of supercells advances eastward, and you know, it's bringing you know some supercells into my area. The SBC issued a moderate risk and you can see the supercells keep going into this area and it cuts off at that point but more than likely this these cells will be moving eastward and there'll be less instability the instability will be waning so i there's still a tornado risk as you head east of bloomington but not as great as over here in my opinion and the spc shows that um so what else are we going to look at uh yeah we're going to look at sounding i think i have it pulled up right here um, no, I have it here at Pivotal. Here's from sounding from the HER. This is around, I think, south of Tazewell County. Um, tomorrow afternoon, evening, you can see that there is a lot of cape, a lot of moisture, and really a lot of shear. You can see storm relative helicity values 355, 429. That's pretty darn high. And also, surface cape values of 3100. You need cape to get thunderstorms and severe thunderstorms. So, we have a good amount of cape, we have a lot of shear. Um, we have a lot of moisture, pretty unseasonal for this time of year. It's We're getting towards April. So, yeah, and we also have some decently curved holographs, really. And it's looking like a increasing, um, likely tornado outbreak that's going to occur across portions of central Illinois. Now, if we look at um, um, weather.com, it's my favorite site to look at. Um, models or severe weather models you know I like weather bell for winter but you know I like weather.cod for severe weather and a lot of people do I'm pretty sure you can see if we look at the NAM it is at 12 kilometer grid spacing so it's not able to distinguish individual storms but what you can look at is you can see a line of storms draping down central Illinois and these are probably supercells right here so the NAMs also producing the potential for severe weather and tornado potential line supercells and if we look at the three kilometer nam you can also see if i'm doing this because i just want to prevent clicking my thing too much because it actually is really annoying with the audio i need to get a microphone by the way i need to you can see elevated convection comes in line supercells coming in and also the screen castle like i gotta make this less than 15 minutes otherwise it cuts me off but you can see line supercells even the champagne or banana possibly i'd still watch it even though you guys are enhanced that doesn't mean that you guys are away from the severe weather there's still going to be potential for tornadoes around this area it'll track eastward across iowa and we lose yeah you know there's a slight risk possibly some severe weather but you know main, my main focus is over here with the biggest tornado potential then the storm comes over you know we get you know we get behind the cold front we get a nice wash of wind so yeah you know after this stuff it's pretty nice behind it um but let's look at the kinematic or let's look at the dynamics going on here so let's look at wind speed at 500 millibars the this this is, just impresses me. Like, look at the amount of shear here. Look at the amount of, look at the wind speeds. Look at the jet streak. Look at this. 100 plus knots at 500 millibars. 108 knots. That's absolutely off the charts. And if we look at the low level jet as well, you can see that it's about, I think, 70 knots if I look at this right. Yeah, it amplifies. And you can see that there's 70, 60 to 70 knot low level jets. So clouds will be absolutely racing tomorrow. You're going to look at the cumulus clouds. They're going to be absolutely racing before initiation. It's going to be one of those days. It's going to be a rough one. Um, and if we look at the um, surface base cape, um, which also accounts for sin, which is all this dash stuff right here. You can see that we have a, a sector that is filled with uncapped instability. All this stuff is capped. It's just instability, but it's capped, and you're likely not going to get thunderstorm development over here. But over here, you got uncapped instability. And once that air is, you know, once that air is just um, warmer than its environment, it's just going to absolutely take off in this environment. And these storms are going to rapidly develop. And then it tracks eastward. We lose some instability, but still remaining tornado threat across this cold front just out ahead of it um and you can see it just keeps weakening as we head eastward but we also look at um significant tornado parameter which takes into account helicity wind shear um instability and you can see the, the values are pretty darn high um you know 
four fives and also near triple point tens, elevens. So this gives you a grasp of what would be of the paternal potential here. There's pretty darn um, significant potential for it. And super salt composite, you can see. Um, let's see if it loads. Pretty darn high too. You know, you're in the reds and pinks. You're getting up to the tens and fifteens, exceeding that. You're getting pretty darn. Um, you're getting pretty darn decent um, supercell environment. Uh, no, that's not that is not what I want. That's stuff I look in the winter time. I'm looking at wind speed to show you guys about lapse rates. How about the rate of change of temperature? You know, and and there are great tools. Look at 700. Not ah man, I'm an idiot. Put wind speed temperature. You can see this cooling off. You can see tomorrow. Afternoon, tomorrow morning, let's look at the elevated convection. We got mainly, you don't have much cooling a lot, you know. You got like, you know, six, you know, you got five, six degrees Celsius. But as we go on in time, we get a cooler pocket area right here, which means that we have decent, low, we have decent lapse rates and we have a lot of cooling a lot. Um, and we're warming the surface. Well, you warm the surface, you cool a lot, you get... You know, very favorable environment for instability and severe weather potential here. You can see it just gets colder, 3, 4 degrees Celsius at about 700 millibars. So, yeah, that's what I'm looking at right now. Right now, we look back at the um, outlook. Uh, let's look. I forgot to tell you guys that we have a 15% hatched. Hatched means that there's 10% or greater probability of EF2 to EF5 tornadoes within 25 miles or point. In this case, 15%. That might not sound like much, but it's pretty darn a big deal. Um, couldn't even could even go the high risk tonight um, across portions of this area. It's just looking really favorable for supercell and tornado development here. Um, but let's see. I, I want to show you guys something else. There's hail as well, 30% hatch, so hail's another thing to look is to also watch. But you know, I wish all the storm chasers um, best of luck. You know, I live here, so I'm gonna have to pay attention very closely, keep my friends, family, you know, safe, talk to them, you know, and tell them, you know, what's coming their way. Um, hope you guys follow me on Twitter if you haven't. Um, just type in at wx underscore geek, and you guys will find it. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and hope you guys will stay safe. I will post any videos I have from my house or just outside of town um, on YouTube and also my Twitter, so stay, stay, stay tuned for that. Um, hope you guys have a great Friday, um, and best of luck to anyone going out there. And stay safe, everyone. Have a way to get warnings as well. All right, see you guys.